Israelis held their breath, held their heads, or even called on a higher power as it became clear that something had gone wrong. National TV carried live images from inside the control room, and there the tension was palpable. When the news of the lander's crash was announced, there was solemn applause. But Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and project chiefs tried to stay positive about the outcome. You win some, you lose some. If at first you don't succeed, you try again. <laughs> and I want to sell it, Pam. The spacecraft was called Bereshit, which translates literally to in the beginning. It hitched a ride into space aboard SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket in February this year. The mission was an attempt to make history. It would have been the first privately funded spacecraft to land safely on the moon. But nevertheless, the project did achieve some milestones. We have achieved an amazing success in bringing a spacecraft to the moon, almost bringing it to the landing. It is by far the smallest, the cheapest spacecraft ever to get to the moon. So despite the disappointment, there is reason to celebrate. The project paves the way for future low-cost lunar exploration. Well, for more on this mission, we have Leah Albrecht with us from DW Science. Good morning, Leah. Good morning. So, what went wrong on this mission? It was a crash landing. It was really during the last seconds, the last few seconds, um, just before the touchdown, they were only 150 meters apparently above the surface, and then mission control lost communication for some reason. Um, so we don't really know what happened during those last meters, but, um, well, they say that maybe the main engine had a problem. We'll, we'll maybe see in further um, investigations. But what is clear is that the Bereshit lander wasn't very robust. As it's privately funded, it, it needed to be cheap. So there was no backup for communication systems or for the solar panel to keep costs low. So close, 150 meters from the surface, and then it went wrong. How big of a setback is this for the Israeli space program? So their big goal was to be the first nation on the moon. This dream obviously crashed, right? Um, even though they were so sure to make it, um, if you look at their Twitter feed, there was one person that tweeted, if they, will, if they land on the moon successfully, they will be the first nation on the moon. And they corrected, not if, but when. So that shows it's not a very scientific approach. It's more of a demonstration of we can. And now they try to, to be optimistic and to still say it's a success because they came this close. They did come really close. Uh, and you know, they actually got their, their lander on the moon, but just not in one piece. Um, what exactly was the point of this mission? Um, well, it was more of a political mission than a scientific one. There wasn't much or big science on board, but it was packed with emotions and with uh, symbols there. They had the national anthem, they had photos of Israeli landscapes, they had uh, the declar Declaration of Independence of Israel. Um, so they really wanted to create this kind of pride in, in Israel and also to promote science among the new generation, and that was still successful. There were many kids wearing spacesuits, for example, yesterday to watch this, this event. Um, so, yeah, this was successful despite the crash landing. So they do have reason to be proud, too. Uh, thank you so much, Leah. Leah Albrecht from DW Science. Pleasure.